Good afternoon and welcome to the continuing adventures of my printed circuit board manufacturing at home uh, where I am up to drilling my circuit board at this point. Um, as you have probably seen the previous videos possibly, uh, you will have seen these stages of this board from original scanned image, magazine, and now we're up to the etched board and we just need to drill it. And then we'll be almost done, because after that I'll tin it and then we'll be done. But this part will uh, focus mostly on the drilling which is um, a rather simple procedure. You just take a drill and you drill some holes. Unfortunately it's also really tedious because you have to be careful not to snap the tiny little sub one millimeter drill bits in half and you also have to uh, have the patience of someone who has a lot of patience, especially if you want to do this by hand, which I really wouldn't advise, but that is the uh, most basic and cheapest option available if you um, are so inclined to do that. Uh, I will point out immediately though that doing it by hand um, is really not advisable unless you have a board with about 10 holes or less because after about 10 holes you'll probably get quite frustrated and fed up with doing anything. So <laughs> if you really do wish to do that you should take probably a piece of wood or something so you don't end up drilling holes in your workbench and then you can um, proceed to put your circuit board on top of it and then you'll probably want to grab a little pin vise or such. Um, it looks kind of like a jeweler screwdriver except it has a chuck in the end for putting drill bits in and uh, you can see I've got about a 1.5 millimeter drill bit loaded in there. Um, this is a titanium coated high speed steel drill bit um, which is probably your best option if you're doing it by hand which is a trade-off between sharpness and um, bendability because uh, the professionals use solid, well, I'm not sure if it's solid, but it's, uh, I think it is solid actually, yeah, solid tungsten carbide drill bits on a sort of high speed steel carrier. Um, and those are very brittle and will break very, very easily, especially if you try to do it by hand. In fact, I mean, you just, they'll break immediately if you try and do it by hand, pretty much. Um, there's just too much flex on this sort of thing um, by hand if you did this. So you need to use high speed steel. Unfortunately that will wear out quite quickly if you're doing it on a uh, fiberglass board. Now this is a not a fiberglass board, this is a phenolic resin um, bonded paper board so it's a bit easier on drill bits. Um, but even so these uh, titanium coated ones or, or tungsten cardboard coated would be a better idea. Uh, well this is alright because it's a 1.5 millimeter. It's less likely to break um, but still you have to be a bit careful it's still quite quite thin you can't you know be silly with it um, I'm going to use this for the for drilling the sort of pilot holes for the mounting mounting holes there are four of them um, around the board because um, they'll need to be like three three or four millimeters at the end anyway but I don't have a uh, you know, I, I won't be doing the whole thing by hand, it's just pointless. <laughs> um, like I said, this is probably like about a hundred holes on this board, so... Yeah, it would it would take a ridiculous length of time and a lot of frustration and... Um, yeah, just, just not a good idea. Really not a good idea, unless you're very desperate or have a very tight budget. In which case, um, do it service mount or something, because uh, otherwise you probably will actually go insane trying to drill that many holes by hand. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yes, the drill bits. So the drill bits you typically probably want for most components about 1mm or 0.8mm. Um, drill bits of that size are generally quite hard to get in standard hardware stores. So um, eBay is probably your best choice for that. Uh, if you want to get those, make sure they're, like I said, high speed steel, just standard steel. You don't want to uh, get the solid tungsten carbide ones. They'll uh, break far too easily. Um, only use those if, you, if you've got a drill press or such like with uh, good precision that isn't going to wobble around and snap things. And even then you'll probably snap a few to start off with um, if you do do that. But uh, by hand I guess that is one method. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just demonstrate drilling one hole by hand and uh, give you an idea of how slow it is. So uh, this is the uh, point I'm going to be drilling. This uh, little registration mark for the mounting hole. So I'm just uh, holding the drill bit holding the drill bit, holding the drill with my uh, finger on top uh, twisting it with my other hand, just the way you'd use a jeweler's screwdriver 
Oh no, it's jammed. Hang on. Because I didn't tighten it up properly. Let's try that again. And there we go. That uh, that's drilled now. You can see. And um, here's the under other side of it. It's uh, it's worked all right. That actually was quite fairly fast because this is a fairly unused drill bit, quite sh quite sharp still. And uh, this board is again, it's phenolic resin, so it's quite easy to cut. Um, so theoretically you probably could do this uh, entire board by hand, but um, it is still far easier to do it with an actual electric drill. So instead of using this thing and driving myself bonkers, I will uh, put this away and I'll use this uh, Proxon tool here instead, which is a uh, much better alternative. Okay, so this is the drill stand for the Proxon tool. I'm just going to assemble this together. Um, you get this bit here, which goes in here. And set this about there. Put the handle in. And tighten up the Allen screw. And there we go. That's pretty much um, all there is to that. And then you just got to put the tool in the uh, in the stand. I'm not really sure why am I showing all this because it's probably not really necessary. Um, But oh well. Um, the fit of this is very, very tight. Uh, so it's nice. Just move the uh, fence thing out of the way. And there we go. Okay, so I'll just grab my. Uh, Drill bits here. I'll put in a one millimeter bit to do the uh, large holes first. Is it enough space? No, I have to turn this up a little bit, I think. It'll be alright. You don't want to have it up too high, otherwise uh, it's just a pain to bring it down all the way, but you don't want to have it too low either. Otherwise you risk hitting it with the board and snapping the bit. Um, that's not too bad, that's pretty... Uh, pretty good, so... Yeah. That looks alright. Um, I'm going to grab this here. The manual so I can look at the uh, component overlay. On here I can look at which so which uh, components are the large components, which are the wires. Um, so for example the uh, bridge rectifier here on this power supply, the filter capacitors, the uh, input terminals, the uh, power resistors, those I'll do with the uh, 1mm hole and all the rest I'll do with the 0.8mm. Um, except for obviously the mounting holes to screw it onto the onto the case which will be about 3mm or so. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, let's put that over there so I can see that. Uh, let's tuck this around the way there. Plug this in. Uh, 
and get some safety glasses so I don't uh, impale my eyeballs with flying drill bits just in case something snaps. Um, if you are doing this uh, for a long amount of time or you know more, off, more often than you know a couple of times a year or something you also will definitely want to uh, invest in some way to deal with the dust and probably get yourself a dust mask and all that sort of thing because um, this does create quite a lot of dust and if you are doing the uh, fiberglass stuff it um, can be quite irritating to the lungs so you don't want to breathe too much of that and you obviously want to clean it up and everything afterwards make sure that you don't get it everywhere um, I'm just going to uh, put this over here this out of the way um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty much it. And then we can set this to about, I don't know, I'll do about 10,000 RPM because this is not fiberglass, so it doesn't matter too much. Let me have a look at, uh, where was it? Oh yes, yeah, so we can do these, uh, these big ones over here for the uh, power input and all that stuff. Yeah, okay, so this is going to be a bit loud, I think, so I don't know how much... Um, how loud this will be on the video. Uh, so I, I obviously won't go through this entire thing, the whole process, just um, doing the whole board because that would just, well, it'll probably take quite a while and be quite noisy and just annoying. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just do like a couple of holes to give you an idea. Also worth it to have some more directed light on here um, so we can really see what I'm doing. Just get this angled there. And, uh, if you have etched your board with the uh, drill holes um, etched in the copper, then you do kind of get a sort of a pilot hole to start with, and um, you get an idea of where to where to bring the drill down. Um, making sure, of course, you do get that fairly accurate, because if we, if you are using a really thin drill bit, like point zero point five or something, and you get the hole off and it drags it to one side, it's quite likely to snap. So um, you don't want to do that, but uh, yeah, I'll just. Um, do this with this. So uh, there you go, that's basically the idea of it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the uh, holes in that. I'll try and uh, get the light to shine through them. You might be able to see ones they've just done. But anyway, they've come out uh, very clean, very fast, and uh, that did 3, 9, 13 holes in about the same time it took to do one with the uh, thing by hand. So it's, uh, yeah. Very, uh, very much more convenient and uh, faster way of doing it. It's sort of a bit strange to start off with when you first do this, I guess, to sort of get an idea of where the um, where the uh, drill is going to come down to actually do the hole. Um, you get really used to it quite quickly. You can see where the tip of the drill is is going. Um, and, and like I said, if you've already etched the holes out on the pads, it's it's really easy. You can just sort of line that up by eye, and as it comes down, you can pretty much tell. And after you do a few boards or a few holes, whatever, um, you get quite used to it. A uh, good idea to do some practice, I guess, if you haven't done it before, just in case. Especially if you're doing a a really fine pitch board with really small small pads in that, um, where the possibility of getting something misaligned will will cause a problem. But in general, it's uh, fairly easy and, and not really too much of a problem. It's something like this, you know, if I even get got one, you know, even a millimetre to the side on, on these big pads, it's not going to make any difference. Um, 
saying that you wouldn't want to have that much error normally but if you did it wouldn't be too bad um yeah so yeah just um really it's it's a drill you can use any drill press i guess um it's not too big of a deal i really like this one like i said it's uh, really easy really smooth it just goes up and down there's no play side to side or anything um like was shown in the uh the dremel one that i saw so um yeah, but, but there you go. Okay, so I've just done all the uh, one millimeter holes. Um, you should be able to see um, through there with the light on it. Um, all these ones. So that's for the uh, the offboard wires, for the uh, the trim pots, the power resistors, the regulators, the uh, bridge rectifier, that sort of stuff like that. All the things with the uh, large leads that require a one millimeter hole. Um, I've just done all those. It's much easier to do all the same sizes of a drill at once. So, for example, I've got this, put my 1mm drill in, do all the 1mm holes, then uh, I'll take this out, change it for the 0.8 and do all the rest. Um, and obviously change again for the 3 to do the mounting holes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, the easiest way to do it. If you d don't switch back and forth between drill sizes all day, that'll sort of take more time and just make things more annoying. So I'll uh, switch that out with the uh, 0.8 instead. It's also worth noting that when you are doing these drills, especially with uh, the smaller sizes, um, do not move the board um, as the drill comes down. I mean, once the drill is is in the hole, um, if you move it sideways at all, if you move the board sideways at all, you'll uh, you'll definitely snap the drill bit. So if you can hopefully see the uh, sort of pilot mark on the uh, pad here, and, and as the uh, I'm sort of moving the board round as I get the drill right just down towards the uh, mark, and just when it's about to hit the board. Um, I put some good pressure on it and make sure that the board doesn't move. So, um, like I said, you'll get used to where the where the mark is and where the drill's going to come down. But basically, as soon as it hits that, um, you don't want to move anywhere. Because if you can see it flexing slightly, if I flex any more than that, it'll, it'll just snap the bit. So, um, and especially if it's uh, drilling, if you move while it's while it's spinning, then you'll definitely snap it. So, don't get your finger too close, but you know, keep it keep everything around and and just make sure you've got somewhere to hold the board and. Um, when the when the bit comes down, just on the pilot hole, pilot mark, you can uh, just put pressure on, make sure the board doesn't move. Um, yeah, so here's an example with this. Line this up, and there we go, done, and that worked fine. So yeah, just make sure to to do it like that. If you um, if you move it at all, it will it will snap. Uh, the uh, more expensive machines do have a sort of little clip that, that comes down and actually holds the board in place um, as soon as you've lined everything up so you don't have to hold anything at all yourself but if you're doing it manually by hand like this um, you definitely need to make sure you don't do that so But yeah, I mean, after a time, you will get pretty good at uh, at finding where the um, where the part hole is, where the drill is going to come down. You can actually kind of see with the shadow um, as it as it's just about to hit the board. You can sort of see where the shadow in the image of the uh, in the image of the drill itself sort of come right together, and that's where you're going to drill. So you sort of get that aligned on the uh, pilot mark, and you're pretty much fine. I mean, you can get like a laser get a laser pointer hooked up and get sort of a laser guided thing which also works but I just go with the uh, just get a light up here like this and, and go with the shadow of the drill bit and where that's gonna come down you you know when it's just barely there then you just lock on and, and go a little bit further and and it's fine it's uh, that's how I do it anyway but I guess the main thing with this is just to take your time really and uh, make sure you don't rush if you rush you're very really likely to snap stuff um, just take your time do it carefully um, at first it'll be a bit sort of strange, but once you get used to it, it'll be fairly obvious. I mean, these ones are pretty much dead center, perfect. Um, just how they are, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. So I'll uh, just finish that off, and um, that'll be that. Okay, so I'm just going to do the final hole, the uh, last mounting hole. 
three millimeter drill bit. Um, got the uh, speed turned right down to 5000 because you don't want to use uh, too much speed on the uh, larger bits. And there we go. So that's uh, that's everything done. And uh, you should be able to see uh, the uh, all the holes drilled there. Um, hopefully. And uh, that's what the uh, finished board looks like. So everything's um, everything's done there. And just uh, all that's left now is to just clean all the dust up, basically. Um, this stuff is uh, not too bad. Like I said, this is phenolic resin, so it's uh, not as much of a deal as the fiberglass stuff. Um, and it uh, does come off in sort of larger chunks as well because it uh, stays together. So you can just vacuum that up, um, which I'll just do in a second. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything done. So now it's time for cleanup. So uh, pretty simple. Just grab a vacuum cleaner and suck everything up. So there's the finished board, all drilled, all done, all cleaned up, everything finished, and uh, that'll be all good to uh, turn in the next video, and then I can finally assemble this thing, and uh, hopefully it'll work. So um, that's it for this one, and I'll uh, see you next time.